Hello, and welcome to Greywood Gardening here in beautiful Zone 4, Minnesota. It's June now, so I thought that for this video we would do something a little bit different and do a garden tour so I can show you the progress on a bunch of the work that we've done earlier this year, as well as a few things that we did and I was not able to have the camera rolling for. So let's get started here in the cottage garden, right in the middle of the driveway. Starting here at the tip of the driveway, which is where the ornamental miscanthus grass was planted, we've got uh, a bunch of perennials starting to take hold. We've got some cosmos uh, hanging out in the middle and uh, they're growing eh, kind of spindly, not great. Uh, we have an echinacea starting to bloom here. And this is some, some butterfly weed also just starting to bud. The iris, we had a few iris bloom despite getting eaten down multiple times, but most of them didn't bloom. Similarly, the chrysanthemums are doing really, really well. Hopefully we'll have some nice flowers for this year. And right around them here, we actually have uh, milkweed. This milkweed uh, was here when we got here. It's one of the few weeds that we kept. Uh, we kept a couple different patches of it in because it's so great for the monarchs. Mrs. Greywood's border here of Lobelia and something else, I forget what, is doing well. And I think her rock border looks great. We have not yet put in the path that we eventually plan to put in. We still just have these stones marking the place where the path will be. And our plan is eventually to plant iris all along the right side of this path. So we'll have sort of a sinewy winding of iris going through the garden. Over here, we have some more cosmos that actually look like they're doing a little bit better, not so spindly as the other ones. Um, we have more milkweed. And then here's our lovely gladiolas that we planted on Earth Day. Uh, we got the bulbs planted. They're growing super strong. It won't be long before we're gonna to need to start thinking about staking those up. Now, if I come around to the back of the garden here, we have our biggest patch of milkweed, which is looking like it's just getting ready to bloom, which is exciting. We should see the monarchs coming pretty soon now. It's the beginning of June. Uh, by mid-June or late June, I'd expect to see them. In here, you can see a bunch of the yarrow that I grew from seed. Um, not that, that is an oak tree growing. Uh, the yarrow that I planted from seed is doing really, really well. It seems to be happy to be here. And here we have some bleeding hearts that we put in the back. They look like they're doing pretty good. It is time of year that they start to die back. We did have the deer eat munch on them a little bit, but for the most part, they're doing pretty good. Oh, one more thing I should mention is we do have this this obelisk that we put in here. Our original plan was to actually grow sweet peas up it. Only it turns out I should have planted the sweet peas two months before the last frost date. So we're probably gonna try to make another trip to the garden center and maybe get a morning glory or something to grow up at. All right, so from the cottage garden, we we'll head over to the area that will be the veggie garden. We can see where we transplanted the ornamental grasses out of the cottage garden. And as you can see, everything is doing phenomenally well. The miscanthus has uh, taken hold and is growing like gangbusters. We also ended up having to put a couple of them over here on the other side, um, as well as some further down in the yard. And actually, while we're over here, um, we can take a look at the bare root of the uh, red twig dogwood that is doing super, super well inside its cages. In fact, probably need to take these cages off pretty soon. I think the deer are pretty much leaving it alone for now. But also while we're over here, take a look at this giant sand bank or what used to be a giant sand bank. It is growing like crazy. Now here on the outside, there's a whole lot. Well, you can see this. There's a heck of a lot of grass coming up. No idea where all that grass seed came from. But you can see throughout it all, lots of um, lots of little wildflowers coming up too, right? Like here's uh, here's a Cosmo growing. 
and this is growing really well all along the entire bank. There are areas where it's a little thinner, but even where it's thin, there are seedlings coming up pretty much everywhere. You don't have a long stretch without something growing. So I'm very hopeful that uh, by midsummer, this entire bank should have stuff growing on it really well, and that'll help to hold it in place. And then hopefully in future years, we'll get more and more organic matter mixed in with the sand. And that'll just give us more and more stability to the bank. Oh, and by the way, these are some of my favorite weeds. Obviously, this is not anything that I planted, but look at that, these monster weeds growing up here. Oh, this one has like a ginormous spider living in it. Oh, here's something that's fun. Just down the sand bank in the entrance, we have some super pretty wildflowers blooming uh, right here by the septic green field. So that's gorgeous. But something incredibly exciting up in this area, da, 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 da. we have a deer fence built around our veggie garden area. So at long last, I will now be able to start building the raised beds so we can plant our veggie garden and not have the deer devour the entire thing. I figured it would probably take me hmm, maybe two months to build this deer fence. And so we hired someone to do it. Yeah, we got a company called Deutschlander Fencing and they knocked this project out in two days. So this fence is eight feet tall. These posts are actually 12 foot posts that are four feet in the ground. The area that's fenced in is about, about 50 feet by 100 feet. We have a small person size gate in the front, which is a four foot gate. And then in the back, we have an eight foot gate that the tractor can get into. So this is going to be the next major project for me is beginning to fill this area with uh, garden beds. Okay, and between the cottage garden and the veggie garden area is the mound garden. It's doing so-so. We have some creeping flocks here that's doing well. And then we have some creeping flocks that's doing very poorly and is half dead. Uh, otherwise, up here we have some Shasta daisies, bee balm, Rudbeckia, Echinacea, and Cosmos, and all of those are doing well. Also, over here, just next to the driveway, we planted some Bloomering Lilacs. Those are also doing super well. All right, let's head on over now to the top terrace garden. Actually, on the way there, worth noting, here on the front steps, we are starting to harden off all of the peppers and tomatoes, basil, squash that I had uh, seeded. So I'm assuming that within a week or so, I will have some raised beds to plant them in. So starting the hardening off process now. So here in the top terrace garden, we planted three uh, forsythia. That's gonna be like a big edge in the back. Up in the front corner, we've got some lamb's ear, some cat mint, some annual salvia, a huge hole that we uh, need to get more flowers to plant in. And interestingly, down here, we can actually see one of our peonies is blooming. I'm not actually sure if you're supposed to let them bloom when they're this small, but I don't know. So we're letting it bloom. We got another one over here that's just about to bloom. The lower terrace garden, which is a little bit of a mess right now, it is desperately in need of weeding. I've been holding off on weeding because I don't know what the poppy seedlings look like. And I don't know if I actually have any poppy seedlings coming up or if I have nothing but weeds. I definitely have a lot of weeds. On the other half of the garden, in addition to more weeds um, and a bunch of branches from the tree that need to get cleaned up, we do have uh, our sunflowers growing nicely in the back. Um, so I might even need to thin a few of those. And we definitely have zinnia seedlings coming up all over here, as well as a whole bunch of weeds that I really do need to take care of. 
and just below the lower terrace garden, we have an area where we actually ended up putting more of the Miscanthus ornamental grass, and it is also rocking it out down here. And this is gonna serve as sort of a barrier between this little strip of grass and what's gonna be a big wildflower area in the yard. But before we get to that, let's pop over to the area that will one day be the orchard. And is currently an orchard of just one tree. Our apple tree is continuing to do well inside of its fence. And the orchard area itself is growing really, really well. One thing that did happen is we have a ridiculous amount of grass coming up. Like we did not have much grass here to begin with. And something about tilling just brought grass seeds up like crazy. That said, it is not all grass. There are plenty of areas where I can see all kinds of wildflowers coming up. So you should have a decent mix of various wildflowers and grasses here. I just wish there was a little bit less grass than there is. We can, down here at the back of the orchard, come and visit the Norway spruce that was recently planted. Um, it is doing well, but in addition to the Norway spruce, I also came in and planted a bunch of bare rootstock hybrid willows. I don't know how well you can see this. So these hybrid willows, these Salix hybrid, I planted about 30 of them. They're tiny, you can really only see the little mounds of mulch where I planted them. But these guys, once they get established, can grow six feet or more each year. And so this is gonna give us a nice screen between our property, but also is eventually gonna become part of a coppice where we will manage the trees by cutting them down every five to 10 years. All right, we can cross the driveway. And here is our other Norway spruce. And we have a similar situation going on with the wildflowers here. We have lots and lots of wildflowers coming up throughout the yard area. But at the same time, we have some giant expanses of grass coming up. Right, so like even just walking over here, this is like all wildflowers with occasional grass. And then you swing over this way, and you've got just solid grass with really the occasional Cosmo popping up between the grass. Again, I'm okay with it. I believe that there will be enough flowers here that it's gonna look gorgeous at the end of the day. I do wish, though, that we had less, didn't have these huge patches of grass that we do that the patches of grass were a little bit smaller. But yeah, in between, like, areas like this is like a beautiful diversity of plants coming up. So coming around here, past the giant log pile, we have the play area that we built in the beginning of the year. We have, by the way, not been able to find any play sets whatsoever. Every place is sold out of their play sets. Which I think is a result of all of the kids being at home and desperately trying to find something for them to do. Uh, one thing we did get done over here is we had a whole bunch of ferns coming up in the cottage garden and we didn't want them there and it's much brighter there than originally was. So we actually transplanted most of those down here by the play area. So hopefully we can have some ferns around the bench. I'm not sure if it is shady enough for them down here, but Certainly a lot better than the cottage garden is now that we've cleared that area. And that's where things stand here at Greywood in June. We've got the wildflower meadows. The seeds are coming up nicely. I wouldn't expect any flowers from that until at least August. And even then, most of what we planted is perennials, so it won't be till next year that those start to look great. The cottage garden, however, is establishing really nicely. It already looks so much better than it did before. And I think by the time we get into July, it's gonna look even better. The terrace gardens have some issues, have some holes that need filling in and a lot of weeding to be done. Uh, but this 
bank all along the veggie garden is just taking off and looks fantastic. That's all I have for you on this video. Next time, I need to get started in this place. Now that we have the deer fence in, I need to build the raised beds and hopefully get them filled with dirt so we can start planting those seedlings that I have that are way overdue to be planted out. Well, until next time, happy gardening.